And it's out of stock. Again. Welcome back motorized bike enthusiast. In today's video we're going to be doing a virtual build. This is something I'm going to try and do every couple of months because I get a lot of comments from new builders who are always asking for alternative recommendations when it comes to motors, frames, and parts. Usually because they're watching an older video and something in that video that they need or want is no longer available or just out of stock. A good example of this is uh, for instance our how to choose a motorized bike kit video. Well, the go-to motor in that video was the Zeta 80 Firestorm with the 4440, which at the time of filming was not available. And then it was in stock, and now it's not available anymore. So, if I was going to build another bike right now, what would I pick from the manufacturers that I buy from? Okay, everything in this video that I show you is in stock right now, so let's get started. For motors, I have two options here. One from Amazon. I'm not going to try and say the name, but I will leave the link to all these parts in the description. This kit I ordered once for my landlord on his first build. And when we got the motor to examine it, we were pleasantly surprised with everything that came with the motor. Not only did we get better hardware than we were expecting, but the motor was pristine. It was the cleanest motor I have ever seen in a kit. So for $111 with free shipping, that showed up in about four days uh, and he doesn't have prime so that's great we got a kit that is actually not represented in this picture so what's pictured for the price is still a pretty good deal but what we got was actually better for instance we got a 415 chain 4 bolt chain tensioner, a real NT speed carburetor which is becoming more difficult to find these days, 40 millimeter stroke, 40 millimeter intake, 8 millimeter mounting studs with the wider mounting point, uh, and a G4 cylinder which is fantastic. And like I said when we opened it up and examined it, it was absolutely clean. We didn't have to do anything to this kit so had a new builder purchased this kit put it on a bike assuming that they built the bike correctly they would have rode this trouble free for quite a long time all right so that is your cheap budget option now that was only a one test sample we purchased one kit we got a great kit we were happy I don't know for sure if this manufacturer is just taking random kits out of a box and shipping them off you might get what we got but even if you only get what's in the picture it's still a pretty decent little kit so that's what I like to call the Amazon lottery. And if you don't want to play the lottery and you want to know exactly what you are getting, then check out California Motorbikes and look at their Wildcat PK80s. If it'll load up here. There we go. So the Wildcat, you're getting everything you see in the picture and what's shown in the description. And this has a few notable upgrades versus what you would purchase off eBay or Amazon. Now you're getting all the boxes that I check off in the motor recommendation video such as the 8mm mounting studs, the better hardware in the kit, but you're getting some other upgrades such as a version 2 of the NT-Speed carburetor has a bigger jet and a wider throttle piston so more fuel, more air getting into the motor to better carb. You're getting a Japanese bearings which last a long time. On kits that prove to be reliable. Say you purchased a random kit and it just so happens to last for many hundreds, maybe thousands of miles. Usually the first thing that will go on those long lasting kits is going to be the bearings. Aside from the cylinder and the piston. Well with the Japanese bearings it's probably not going to happen because those things just last forever. It also has a one piece crank set and these are generally less vibration. They're more, they're, they're more balanced than the two pieces. I get a lot of comments of people asking me you know how they get rid of engine vibration and I don't reply to all those because they're not gonna like the answer but it's usually the cheaper two-piece crank sets that just vibrate there's not much you can do unless you take the crank out and balance it with the one pieces I'm not saying they're perfectly balanced but they are far better than the two-piece cranks. The 41 2 sprocket that they include with their kit has a higher top speed but a better cruising speed that's smoother on the engine it does sacrifice a little bit in the low end, but nothing that would give you considerably more pedaling issues. And with the two bikes we pick in this kit, uh, the 41 two sprocket is going to be fine for those. 
Another thing I'd like to point out for uh, California motorbikes is that they have ported cylinders available for a very reasonable price. Of about $30, you can get a ported cylinder. So not much more than you'd get a stock cylinder for. With these, it's probably the easiest way to get performance out of a motor. Somewhere down the road, when you've been riding your bike for a while, you're eventually going to say, like all of us, I wonder if I can get a little bit more performance out of this motor. And with something like a ported cylinder, you can. Just slide off your old one, slide on the new one. You might need some new gaskets, but other than that, you're good to go. Adding a ported cylinder is probably the best modification you can do to get more performance out of a motor, aside from getting a tuned pipe. And if you put those two together, you've pretty much reached the higher limit of what these motors are capable of without severe modifications and um, something like a case reed valve, things like that. Move on over into bikes. Start with the Kent Bayside. You guys know I just did a video on this last week, so go check it out if you want all the details of why I recommend this bike to new builders. In a nutshell, it's a solid frame for the price. It's readily available at Walmarts across the United States. You can fit any two-stroke in you want. It has room for plenty of modifications to get the look and feel you want out of the bike. It's a comfortable ride aside from the crappy handlebars. And all in all, it's just a decent bike for putting a two-stroke in. However, not good for four strokes, so keep that in mind. The Roadmaster's Granite Peak is a decent frame to put your first motor on. It is a bit of a tight fit. The YD100 fits on it just fine because of the style of airbox that comes with its carburetor. However, the Zeta 4440 uh, was tight on the airbox. We had to modify it, so that's not a big deal. Modifications to the airbox are easy to do. You can eliminate them completely and just keep the foam filter. There's a lot of way around it, but you can fit a motor in this bike. It is tight fit, but it works just fine. I've had two of these before. I crashed both of them, which ended up being their downfall. It was not the bike's fault, obviously. I crashed them both into ditches. First one bent the forks, the second one te tweaked the rear of the bike, and I could never get the rear tire aligned. However, before I crashed the bikes, I'd ridden them for a couple of months with the YD100, which was ported and had a few other modifications on it. Made it a pretty torquey little motor, and the bike stood up to it just fine. So, these are decent little bikes for $100. Other frames to consider but I'm not covering in this video simply because the ones that are available are uh, inflated in price and the ones that are not available are the only ones I would consider being um, at a decent price point. But in the future you might want to consider looking into the gas bikes frames, things like the Felt Faker, CDH Power, um, Bike Brace supposed to have them but they never do and bicycle engine kits they've been out of stock for a while now all the gas bike frames that I see on the motorized bike sites are out of stock however the price is acceptable I mean, you're looking at about six hundred dollars that is considerably more than a cheap bike and if it's your first build you might not want to go that high however these are incredibly new builder friendly so if you do see one and you can't afford it something to definitely consider they have horizontal dropouts which makes chain tension adjustments really easy and more secure they're designed to mount the motor some of them even have motor mounts built in but they have wide frames nonetheless obviously you got the built-in gas tank and many of them come with the beefy triple tree forks um, they're great ways to go. They have a really nice look and all in all they're going to be built stronger but not significantly stronger than a Walmart bike. You're still going to be dealing with a lot of China parts here. But just keep these in mind. Uh, another notable convenience on these frames is a lot of them, especially the ones with the mag wheels, have a specific place for you to mount the sprocket on the rear wheel hub because it uses front disc rear caliper brakes which frees up the disc mounting 
uh, space on the rear wheel and you just slap the rag joints or not the rag joint but the uh, rear sprocket straight on there with a couple of bolts and you don't have to deal with the rag joint so big convenience looking at some of the options on eBay which is the only thing I see that's available at the moment is just way overpriced you can get just the frame if you have all the hardware already or you're willing to spend the coin to get the hardware and build your own bike but keep in mind you're going to need pretty much everything you know forks stem handlebars cranks chains seat seat posts wheels uh, this one comes with wheels I guess but uh, everything that makes a bike a bike is what you're going to need unless you want to shell out the thousand dollars for a full built motor ready kit which is just these are inflated prices plus shipping I would not consider these um, at all now before I move on to essential tools and hardware, I want to briefly discuss why I have never built one of these high-end motorized bikes. Like the gas bike frame with the best motor and motor modifications. I cannot justify it at the price point. So once you start to get one of these full built frames with a performance oriented motor and all the modifications that goes into that you really start to get up there in price and thankfully somebody already did a video on how much you can look into spending on a fully kitted out top performance bike and that's life of Marcus he has a really good video on how much he spent it's an honest video on his entire build now he's got performance he's got a good looking bike and it's something to be proud of and if you are into motorized bikes to the point where you can justify spending this much money on it instead of buying an actual motorcycle for the same price then that's your thing great but for me once I get above a thousand dollars the rest of that I would just save up to get an actual motorcycle and that's what I ended up doing when I purchased the Raketa and I started to realize you're gonna be spending about three thousand dollars if you want to go fully kitted out which I think he actually has down here now yeah, three thousand twenty two dollars I love these bikes. They are so fun to ride. Part of them being fun to ride is not the fact that you're on a bike with a motor on it, but it's the fact that it's cheap, simple, easy to work on, and the cheap parts are readily available. There's an exponential curve when it comes to price to performance on these bikes. You got cheap, cheap, a little bit of performance, still pretty cheap, and then all of a sudden to get that little bit more performance, the price just starts jumping way up in the air. And just to give you kind of an idea of what $3,000 can get you, um, for about $2,000 shipped to your door, you can get a 250cc dual sport, the Hawk 250. And thanks to channels like Moto Cheese, who take these kind of cheap bikes and they go over all the issues and things you need to know about them to make them reliable, you can get one of these and be confident to take them on nice long trips. They're street legal in most states and you can ride them on trails. And ones like this, the DLX with electronic fuel injection, are street legal in all 50 states. And like I said, you can take them on trails. So at that price point, I can't justify that. I would rather spend that money on a dual sport. <laughs> okay, so the first thing you need to be buying when you're buying a bike is a good helmet. Doesn't necessarily need to be an expensive helmet but it does need to be a good helmet. Okay, I recommend a DOT helmet. Now this is just here for reference. Um, you can scour the internet for one that meets your requirements. There's different sizes and there's a size chart on a lot of these on how to choose the right one. It tells you how to measure your head and all that good stuff. I prefer half um, head helmets. I don't, for a couple of reasons. First off, it's DOT, so you're getting a full motorcycle protection under this dome. Second, not being a full face doesn't kind of like give you away. Like if you're not wearing a helmet, you're cop bait. But if you're wearing a full face helmet on a motorized bike, you're also cop bait. Something like a half face helmet in the gray states for legality of motorized bikes is something that's kind of stealthy while still giving you adequate protection. So I like these and that's what I choose. But that's your personal preference. You have to have a helmet on these bikes. I'm going to leave a link in the description to a video that shows what happens if you go head first onto asphalt. This particular individual who did not appear to be going very fast at all hit a meridian and took a headshot straight onto the asphalt and did not move at all after that. They called ambulance. Ambulance picked him up. I have no idea if the guy survived, uh, but the author of the video noted a considerable amount of blood on the ground. 
Guy was not wearing a helmet. He was on a motorized bike. He wasn't even going that fast. He didn't get hit by nobody. He just, his own simple mistake. Wear a helmet, guys. Okay, one tool you will need for motorized bikes is a chain breaker. You need one that's capable of doing 410 and 415 chain. I recommend this one because it'll also do 41 roller chain. 41 roller chain is a good chain to upgrade to in the future. It's a little stronger than the 415 and the 415 stronger than the 410. And this will do both. Okay. And the second one, kind of optional, but for first time builders, this is probably going to save you a lot of headache. Get some half links. Okay, most of these kits, at least the two I recommended, use the 415 chains. So you're going to want to get some 415 half links. The reason why is sometimes, and this is different on every build, you have just enough chain to be annoying. Where your chain has too much slack in it, but if you take a full link out, it's too tight. It's really annoying to deal with. So half links will save you that headache. And last but not least, get a mirror. Mirrors can save your life. It's really important to know when there's a vehicle coming up to overtake you. Um, trying to turn your head every couple of seconds to see who's behind you is very unsafe. And I've heard a couple of guys in the Discord server who have crashed because they were checking over their shoulder. There's different styles you can get. If you're going with um, a bike that has flat handlebars, then you can get these bar end mirrors. These work really well. Um, something like this cheap kit that comes with two, these are nice. I've used these plenty of times. You just make sure all the bolts are real tight when you put it into the bike so they don't vibrate loose and it wouldn't hurt to use some Loctite on all of the bolts as well. But these are very adjustable and if the bike falls over, they fold in instead of immediately breaking off. It doesn't mean they won't always break, but they have a better chance of survival. Now if you have something like a beach cruiser with the curved bars and you like the curved bars because you're crazy, then go with something like these flexible ones or the ones that clamp onto the bars because those will allow you to adjust them more freely. I haven't been able to get bar in mirrors to work on beach cruiser bars. I tried it in my last video and it didn't work at all. So definitely consider that. All right guys, I hope this video was helpful, especially for new time builders or somebody looking just to build another bike. Um, I'll try and do another one of these in the future if it's something you guys like. And stay tuned to the channel because we got a lot of content coming up. We got parts in the mail and bikes that need to be fixed. Until then, ride safe. That little guy was slick.